What's your go-to pieces of equipment? Like, what are the things you want them to have in their gear bag? Oh man, we got a bunch of stuff. What's in our gear bag right now? We've got a band. We've got an ankle band. We've and you'll, you, you'll use the ankle band in turn. Will you use a buoy with a band or use best straight band? You know, that's another thing that's changed over the years. We don't use the buoy a whole lot for pulling anymore. I think, I don't know how it was for you, but in, in my day, it was put the band buoy paddle on. We could go all day, right. every yeah. day. The, uh, I have found, I like trying to find ways to get, force people to do things. Force might be a strong word, but like just people to do band around your ankles. You've got to get a high elbow catch on freestyle. It's yeah. all you've got. It, I think you have to use it sparingly, be careful with it, but band, we do a lot of band only stuff with freestyle yeah. and backstroke. Yeah, if, if your legs are doing that, you better get a catch <laughs> on the water real quick or you got to be right. digging holes. I think it's probably just another version of resistance work, right? It's, it just, there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah. So we've got band, we got a small buoy. I don't, I'll, we don't use like big old buoys anymore. Mm -hmm. We, most people carry fingertip paddles, a small set of paddles and a big set of paddles. Okay. Snorkel, tempo trainer. Let me, let me ask you yeah. something really quick, real quick. Give me an example of when you would use each one of those three levels of paddle. So the fingertip paddles, I think are great for, again, going back to that high elbow catch. If like we do some in the water tubing stuff, we usually use some fingertip paddles with that. I think it just forces you to get that elbow up, really holding on to water. I like it on breaststroke, really helps you get into the corners on breaststroke. The smaller paddles, I would say there's a broad stroke here, but uh, would use them for something other than freestyle. The smaller paddles, something okay. other than freestyle. I'm not anti-using paddles for strokes. I think you need to be careful with it, but there's some real merit in, in uh, the paddles with no wrist straps, being able to enter the water real cleanly, whether it be freestyle or fly or backstroke, and then listen to the feedback of the paddle. Mm. The paddles moving all over the place or falling off, you're probably missing something somewhere. And then the big paddles are more for... Maybe if we're going some uh, breathing pattern stuff or maybe a little lower intensity and you want to have some sort of strength component to it, that's usually what the bigger paddles are for. Okay, cool. Thanks. Sorry for cutting you off there. No, I just... all good. Yeah. So keep going with the gear. You're up to... Tempo the... trainer. I think that's what I had. So, Would you use that for all strokes on tempo trainers? I, again, I think that's one of the pieces that evolves as you move through the program. I think when you get to a certain level... We can start getting real specific on race statistics. I think the hard thing for most of the kids that I work with is they're growing and their bodies are changing. So you've got to have some things that you go back to. Yeah. I remember a kid a few years back ended up being a great swimmer at Purdue. I remember about every six months we'd have to slow down and break down the stroke again because he'd grow an inch or two <laughs> and strength has to catch up. So I think some of my job is be patient with some of that stuff and be aware of some of that stuff. So my point in all of that being the tempo trainer, I think for me is reserved for teaching, teaching like underwater kick tempos or trying to get people to kick faster. We use it a lot there, but then also as a per person gets to a pretty high level, I think we can start messing with, maintaining tempos throughout a 50 all out or a hundred all out. But I think that's a pretty, that's a fairly high level thing for probably not having a freshman boy who doesn't know how many strokes he's taking. We're not putting on a tempo trainer and talking about maintaining a tempo. All the way. Okay. What about resistance work? Do you use any type of racks or buckets and things like that? We've got them all. I can use them intermittently that's not fair we certainly have a purpose for using them for whatever reason i come back to mainly tubing and parachutes and then when i get people that are a little older i end up putting them on the towers a little bit more okay. uh, and then also i think if i start finding somebody who truly is like a 200 down 100 down kind of person i use them a little bit more but most of the time in our program that's not till later in your high school career. Cause I just, just find so many times where people that came to me as a hundred breaststroker might end up being a really good flyer or it just changes a lot. So yeah. Yeah. That answer that. <clears throat> what about fin work? How do you feel about fins? Oh, left that out of the gear bag. Short <laughs> yeah. fins, short fins only. Short Pretty... fins. Yeah. <laughs> we use some socks as well. That's probably something we come back, back and forth to fins. We certainly use for uh, 
speed stuff, you know, over speed stuff, where we're trying to be faster than race pace, or maybe they're a little sluggish and need some gear. We certainly do a lot of that stuff. That's probably where fins are used the most. And then depending on the time of year, if we're in a more volume oriented, I might sprinkle in fins just to take some stress off of them. But that, that's how we utilize fins most of the time.